non-college player, Stephen Jackson, <laughs> and Yahoo Sports NBA insider Chris Haynes. All right, Marcel, I'll start with you. <laughs> I got, I got. <laughs> Would, pros would prospects playing longer in college improve the NBA? I, I mean this 100%. <laughs> if I could, Whitlock, I would stay another year. <laughs> What's the coup card? What's the coup card? Because I really mean this. <laughs> right. What the hell? <laughs> Nobody forcing you to leave, bro. All that money yeah. is. He don't want to get them buckets to college for free another year. It's amazing mm. that these guys get caught up to the noise and they listen to it to the point where they actually got to sell something to the noise, when in reality, this is for you, Zion. Right. This was your best year ever. You know why? Because it was your last great year. Guess what next year is going to be? Even better, brother. You're going to get that check. You're going to get that opportunity. And you, because you're going to go to a sorry team, is going to get an opportunity to go out there and make it even a greater year. So why limit yourself in this capacity? I'm, I'm, I'm still going to class. For what? I went to an Ivy League school. I knew smart people who don't even go to class extra times. Mm -hmm. I believe, Zion, you don't. Oh. But get to my point. <laughs> What's your Would point? the NBA be better <laughs> if the kids stayed longer in college? I was trying to kill you with them jokes. Now it's <laughs> real dope. <laughs> Hell no. no Hell no. <laughs> I mean, we're not even going to go the none and duns because we know that that list, LeBron, Kate, Kevin Garnett, Kobe, uh, we ain't Tracy, Tracy yeah, McGrady, Sean Kemp. Keep Let's going. go back. Let's talk about the one and dones to keep it apples to apples in Zion. And there's a little full screen here to support this. Mm -hmm. uh, the Kevin Durant, Derek Roses, Kyrie Irving. I, I picked their first three seasons to make it match up to what they would have given the collegiate level versus what they gave the NBA. 25, 20, 20, 21. Uh, guys hit the ground running. And it's not an anomaly to see a guy hit the ground running. It, those numbers support that and even more. So to my point, you can't get the toothpaste back in the tube. The branding is out in terms of when you see a roster in college and it's juniors and seniors, first thing you think about is what? Oh, they ain't good enough to go pro yet. So now you're going to try to rebrand the upperclassmen at the collegiate level? You can't do it. Take your butt to the pros and get that money. Yeah, I didn't realize Coach K was kicking Zion out of school. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And see, what makes you believe? Well, hold on, before I go any further. Yep. What makes you believe that he truly meant what he said by he? Please. Because yeah. there's no other reason to say it. What? Like, there's no, there's no, there's no upside to saying that. He truly believes, like a lot of guys. Look, man, the lack of responsibility for a lot of people is the key to happiness. And having a job is responsibility. <laughs> playing in college, having fun, playing 30, 35 games a year. That's a, that's a that's a cake life for a guy like Zion. If you're playing at a Duke or some of these major colleges, it can be fun. May not be as financially rewarding but it can be fun. I think it's all talking points and the good recruiting points for mm. incoming. Kids coming in. Inco yeah, kids coming in. Mm. Want to stay and all that, but please. Like, nobody's forced to. You can, you can go back. Go back. But look, I I'll say this. We, we talking about, yes, it would improve the value of the NBA. Thank if, you. Look, but look, it, it would. You. It would. If, if you're allowing guys to come in um, and stay three years of college, two, three years of college, because they will be more developed. But look, I'm a firm believer. I know most people would agree with me. College isn't for everybody. I, I, I firmly believe that. I believe if you have a supreme skill, you should be allowed to get... That, 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 that boy, is, that, that's, that's, that's proof over there. That's proof over there oh, right there. You, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> that's yeah, proof yeah, over yeah. there. But no, but usually, you know, you go back to the Patrick Ewing days, Charles Barkley, those guys stay. I get it, but also, what, what lot? We have to understand, man, the chances of an injury occurring. Mm, that, can, that can occur in college and you're not able to reap your full financial benefits. That is, a, that is, that is something they have to weigh considerably. Listen, I, I agree with that. And I'm for the NBA financially compensating these guys because I just think it's better than having guys. Trey Young put up a bunch of meaningless buckets in Atlanta this year. He ain't contributed. Nobody winning nothing. And none of these young guys really are. The game would be better if the players, and again, I'm not talking about what's right or wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm saying would the game be better if they were trained up in college and sent to the NBA as men? Well, if you were saying the same thing about Trey as you were saying about Ben Simmons when he won it, I respect it. Ooh. But you're not mm -hmm. saying the same thing. Ben hey. set out his rookie year for one. But he still won the rookie year, and it was meaningless. It, mm -hmm. it was. So same thing, Trey. So mm -hmm. if you if you going to be on the team, play your best, and if you get an individual award, that's on you. But to answer your question, I feel like I would rather come out in the NBA and go out of high school and struggle than have to sit there and make a hypo sounding uh, video to bring recruits <laughs> in to make, to make it seem like I enjoy college. Yeah. You know, I, I, I would rather just go straight to the NBA now. Like he said, some people made for college, some people's not. I'm not I wasn't made for college. And 
I wish I would have went to college, to be honest, because the college I, the college I signed with ended up winning the national championship my freshman year. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I ended up, I was strong enough to go through overseas and bounce around to get back to the NBA. Everybody's not built like that, so it depends on the person to me. Mm -hmm. All right, Stack, here's what I just want you to Come out of your player mindset mm -hmm. and just pretend you're the owner of an NBA team and you just want the value of your league to go up. Would you not admit the game was better served by more experienced players coming into the NBA? A lot of these young guys just sucking up men. Is they, they're not really contributing to the overall health of the game until these guys get to be 21, 22, 23 years old. Well, if, if a scout goes and picks a player that's not ready, that's on the scout. Mm. You can't blame the kid for taking the opportunity. Kids are drafted off potential. Now, if they were drafted off of who can help us win next year, a lot of these guys, other than Zion, a lot of these guys would be going a lot lower in the draft. Yeah, but, you know, I always go back to the 18-year-old. If, if you can go to war at 18, you should be able to put, provide for your family at 18. You know, you know what's weird, though? Looking at the list of the people that you're using to support your argument, when we talk about Steph and Clay, yeah. Lillard and McCollum, only Lillard hit the ground running and it is a close version to what he is now. If you look at Steph, it took him to year four. Clay, year four. You talk about CJ McCullough, year three. None of those guys, and they stayed in college. And then they came in the NBA, and it's a different world. It's a different level. So to stay in college, you still got to make the adjustment. You still got to get up to that next level. But then you got to think about all the people that's trying to get in the NBA. That window is small. Mm. You get hurt or anything can happen. Guy's trying to take your spot daily. All right, let's move on to this. Yes. I believe Zion Williamson is a can't-miss prospect. I think he's in the same boat, not quite LeBron, but in that same boat as LeBron James. Do you feel like Zion's can't miss? <laughs> not like LeBron. Once you say LeBron, I'm off. Like, I'm in a different yeah. conversation. Because LeBron is top five if you're a hater. Uh, he's top three probably if you're really looking at basketball and giving it really his proper value. You can be great. You can be amazing. You can be excellent. You could be Anthony Davis. Is Anthony Davis top 50 all time? Some would say no. Some would say maybe he's surging to that place. But the point is, a perennial all-star is still not LeBron. LeBron's another echelon. In the future Hall of Famers, he's in that private room that most can't get into. So to say he's going to be like LeBron, so many leagues. The anticipation there. is the same, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the hype. The, the anticipation But, but again, you're yeah. talking about LeBron where he has finished at. Mm -hmm. When LeBron came into the league, everybody was like, oh, my God, he's going he's to take going over. To, right. He's going to take... You don't have that same no, feeling about that. Zion? I don't, no, I don't. No. Even though he's a finesse bully ball player, he doesn't play bully ball, but he has the ability to, but he's a finesse style player, I don't see LeBron it. LeBron came I, in polished. Mm. He came in polished. You don't see Zion as the face of the NBA over the next... No, you, you still got KD, you got Steph Curry, you got a lot no, of guys no, no, in the I'm not talking about immediately, but I'm talking about... When I say can't... He's a media star. Yeah, but immediately he's going to be a star. But I'm saying, you don't think five years from now he's going to be the top player in the league and the face of the league? I don't. Why not? I just, I just feel like his talent is already to the point where he's almost reached his, his, his peak. Damn. Mm. He can learn how to mm. shoot, and he can lose some weight. But... As far as anything else, he's an athlete. And I've seen a lot of guys that come in the game that can jump, they're real explosive. If they don't add nothing to their game, they stay the same their whole career. Mm -hmm. at, at, when an athlete loses uh, athleticism, he really doesn't have anything to his game. So if he can add some stuff, maybe. But as of now, I don't see it. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, me personally, I wouldn't call him a can't-miss prospect. I would call him a can't-pass-over prospect at the uh, number one. Because I think whoever, whoever passes, if they pass on him at number one, then... That owner, that GM is going to be ridiculed for life if this guy ends up turning out to be you who you think. Him, yeah, yeah you got to draft him just from that. Like, even if you're waffling, like John Moran, I had him on my podcast last week. Even if you're waffling between those two, you got to go with Zion just because, you know, people like yourself and everybody else believe he's going to be, be the next LeBron. I don't know. Well, look, I don't know. To me, I knew LeBron was going to be a star. Mm -hmm. I did. I don't know with him. I know he has the potential. I know he has the tools. It's something we've never seen before. But I... I'm not so, but at the same time, I'm not so that he's going to be a scrub. And right. Help me out with this then. How did y'all feel about, like, and I know this is years ago and you were just a baby or I don't, I don't know, maybe you're not even alive, but <coughs> when Charles Barkley came into the league... I was three. Did you not <laughs> think he was going to be... A, I, I, <laughs> I was, so, I, I just I don't, don't understand. Okay, maybe the guy won't be LeBron or Jordan, but, but you telling me you don't feel comfortable this dude's going to be as good as Charles Barkley? Put it like this. It's not going to be the number one draft pick and we're looking at him like Ola Candy. 
it's not going to be that. Okay, we, we, we understand, we, we understand he's going to be a star, but we don't know how high he's going to go. Yeah. You know why? I, I think there's two forces that are happening now than happened when Barkley came out. Barkley, if you look at a roster from number six through nine that played in NBA then, they weren't the same talent level as what you see right now, the athleticism. It was a different talent yeah. then. So a guy like a Barkley can come out there and bully his way because it wasn't the most talented of guys. Collectively. More athletically. Yeah. More athletic. Yeah. Now, shoot. Barkley if had a jump go, shot, too, though. Yeah, yeah. No, I know Barkley was amazing at all levels, but it was an easier situation to walk into in terms yeah, of athleticism. Then. Playing that card. Mm -hmm. You play that card now, you in the gym with a lot of people. Now, get because I watched – Andrew Wiggins is going around right now with his mixtape from high school. Mm -hmm. And social media pressure with the likes and clicks and how big you are in that presence – has really allowed people to start saying people are greater than they are. LeBron didn't even have social media influence when he came out. Mm -hmm. It was just like, oh, he was on the cover of SI. Right. Like, now, if you're on the cover of SI, so what? What's your Instagram look like? Right. So he's coming in with a different presence and pressure that I think is kind of hyping him up a little more than maybe he could live up. To. I just see a, a, a body that's going to get better. I believe mm -hmm. the guy's going to get in better shape. I believe his first step for a guy his size is amazing. Insane. I think he puts it on the floor better than people give him credit for. I think he plays with an energy and a ferociousness and a, and a joy and a passion that's going to overwhelm the NBA. I see a better Charles Barkley, but but again, I, I'm, I may be wrong. Y'all see something different. Well, I'm, the, the only thing that I want to see is in college he was able to jump over and overpower everybody. He won't be able to do that every night in the NBA. Mm -hmm. This guy's just as athletic, just as strong as him. He won't be able to do that. Now, will he die when guys compete and knock him down? You got to see all this stuff as a young guy. We, we can say he's going to lose weight, he's going to get in shape, all that, because he's going to be an NBA system. But when he get knocked down, he's going to get up. That, the first time he missed four or five shots, is he going to shoot again? Mm -hmm. We're gonna, we we got to see him grow first. The hype is there. Oh, the yeah. hype is there. When you compare to LeBron and Kevin Durant coming into the league, the hype is there. But... I, that's where I can relate to because I, I remember with LeBron and KD. But you knew they were going to come in and yeah, give you buckets. Yeah. You knew that. I don't know that. Like, I don't know that was I. Why not? You know, he's going to dunk on some people. Hey, look, look, there, there's a couple <laughs> things. Like, look, his, his physical makeup, he's six, really six, six. I was about to say that. Yeah, he's really about six, six. What position? And I know we're, we're in a positionless game right now, but there's a lot of question marks more with him than we had with. KD and LeBron, guys who came into the league. That, that's it. I'm not saying, I don't know what he's going to do. be, but I just know that there's too much pressure placed on that pick to pass on him at number one. Even that, John Morant, we know he's going to be a point guard, like he point said. Point guard. Point guard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, 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 what did he say that on, Stephen? Okay, 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 ok